Welcome. There's so many new subscribers to the channel. Thank you for being here. We have a return guest today. This is Simone. And um, if you look for her original episode, we um, looked at why she was having trouble with her knees and found that it actually wasn't her knees. It was something to do with um, around her hip area. So how have you been doing? You did something really crazy not long after we met. So what'd you do? Well, I decided to run up Willis Tower because nothing tests your knees like running up 2,400 <laughs> stairs. 2,400 <laughs> stairs. And any like soreness pain? Not at all. Not Woo! a single muscle sore. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Um, so where we left off, so the knees are pretty good. Yeah, amazing. We left off, it was a hip uh, restriction that was um, causing her leg not to be able to move that didn't allow her, that put stress at her knee. And as that relaxed, her knees were working a lot better, but there's still more. She really didn't have complete range of motion in a, in a nice way on either one of the hips. And which one is bothering you more? The left, for sure. Okay, so... Um, we are going to recheck very quickly just a, a bunch of the basics and um, then dig into what else we can do with that left hip. And uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Kara Lindell. I'm the founder of the Bridging Institute and the Bridging Technique, which you're going to see. But um, it results from my background as a systems engineer and a movement specialist. And what we do at the end of the day is reset muscle memory, but it's which muscles to reset that are also key to our process. And that's where the, the engineering perspective comes in is the problem solving. So what we found originally by looking at how all these little movements with Simone were working is that the restriction was really at her hip. And as a child, she had had surgery there. We supported that and that let the muscles get back to working together, even though it'd been a few years. Um, so we're gonna start with how is she moving standing up and then look at how our limbs and core are moving when she's laying down and see what needs uh, a little more help. So I'm just have you stand in front and I'm just gonna um, see how she moves and her body protects her uh, moving side to side. It's actually nice. It's not perfectly centered, but it's pretty good. And side to side is good. It's a, I'm getting very picky now because she's so good. The left is just a little stickier than the right. Um, and then forward and back. And that's really nice too. Um, I'm gonna let you sit down and we're gonna check similar things, but without her standing. So side to side. Can you feel that? It feels like there's just the brake didn't come off all the way when you go from left to right. Yeah. To the left, it's super easy and flowy. And then it just feels like it's like somebody's got the brakes on as you go to the right. And then turning. So turning to the left feels just a little, um, not quite as easy as the, uh, to the right. And then I'm going to go forward and back. Excellent. Okay. And then um, lay down on your back. And. Oops. So not get caught up here. Um, <laughs> okay, so just a real quick check to see how shoulders and arms are doing. Excellent. I always like to make sure that there's nothing else that people forget about because they do. And lifting. So here's where one of the difference, the imbalances that we wanted to see if we can get more is her leg turns in, goes back to the middle. It doesn't really turn out. And that would be restricted by whatever scarring um, residual is left from that surgery. But the right one doesn't really turn out either, but it's more centered in how it does move. Can you, can you tell that difference? Yeah. Yeah. Let's just see if at the pelvis she moves equally. And pretty much that is. Um, so how are you finding this a um, good way to sleep? I sleep on my back. I sometimes in the morning hours I'll turn, but I sleep on my back. Okay. So let me just also check. I'd like to know where we are starting with this. I'm going to roll you toward me. So this is how our arms and legs connecting to her core. So unless I really muscle it, she's not moving and the right shoulder actually seems to be tight. But I think we found that before and it cleared up from working at the left hip. Um, so that's the interesting thing in the body is so much of it is connected. 
and yeah, that side moves better. So we're, we are gonna work with the left side. Um, I always like to know which side is better because we work from the best. And so I'm gonna let you roll onto your right. Grab a pillow here for you. And I'm gonna support your leg right here. Just kind of lets her hip be more available to move as the um, interconnection between the abdomen and the legs start to match up a little bit better. And take one of our peanut balls, tiny little guy, and I'm going to hold right in that crease where she would have had the surgery. It was a hernia repair. And remind me, how old were you? I think like eight, eight or nine. Eight or nine. So she probably grew a little bit since then. Um, so I know with other modalities, especially the massage therapists, where there's a scar, you want to massage the scar and try to break up the scar tissue. I don't know if anyone ever thought of that for you. No. We're not trying to break up the scar tissue. What we're trying to do is get the muscles to connect and talk to each other um, in a new way despite the scar tissue. And because scar tissue had a job and we just need to have the muscles find a new way to work together. Um, so I'm actually going pretty gentle here with the support and what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to get one more. Um, and we're going to put on the, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, um, on the back side. So I'm going to have front to back. And what I want to do is just get nice bouncy movement through from front to back um, so that um, all the connective tissue, the muscle, everything has just got this nice, easy give to it. And so we'll just very playfully bounce it back and forth. And see how it changes. Um, what you're gonna notice watching is that you're gonna see the ripple of the movement shift in how um, her leg moves, how her core moves, even uh, up to her head. We actually don't want to see much movement at your head. Um, if we're thinking about walking or running, jumping, um, when our feet meet the ground, there's a lot of force. It's called ground reaction force. And one of the jobs of the skeletal, musculoskeletal system is to absorb the force from the ground. Um, we don't want our head bouncing around with every time we walk when we take a step. So when something is stiff, it's going to not attenuate as much of that force. And then you get some stress and pain. So I'm alternating between which side am I trying to uh, kind of wiggle from is from the front to the back and back to the front and I'm going like right now I'm holding the back and moving the front there so it's starting to move a little bit differently yeah and what we want to get is kind of just this nice wiggly jiggly There you go. Feel that? Mm -hmm. It's more of a, a soft wave rather than a, a forced, kind of like if you're doing a jump rope. How, how much effort are you having to put into it? And then I'm going to do this just a little bit more, but with your leg in a slightly different position because it was bent a little bit. We're going to straighten it. There. You okay? Yeah. All right, so just a little bit more because as it straightens, it puts more tension here and we want this to loosen up. So we, this happened when she was eight or nine years old. It's like, well, how can something from that long ago still cause some impact? Well, you've been compensating for all these years. Yeah, I've been uh, trying to work out <laughs> yeah. with uh, weights and doing squats and deadlifts to kind of stabilize or like support my knee. Yeah, but it's just a little compensation where the alignment between your leg and your core is just shifted 
maybe a couple of degrees, but it's just enough yeah. that um, it puts different stress on the muscles and the joint. There. So out of the corner of my eye, I can see what your how your foot's been kind of bobbing around, and it's starting to move differently. So the motion at your hip is translating differently through your leg and down to your foot, which means any motion from your foot is going to translate differently at your hip. And we are going to recheck the other side too, because it you had a surgery over there too. Yeah. And so it may need a little bit more. Um, so this is the second time that I've seen Simone. And what we find often with people with a follow-up is um, it, we're just there's a little bit more to do with what we originally found. Um, and it's like the body has this amazing capacity to change and heal itself, but it can only do so much at a time. And that's the benefit of youth is uh, the, the youth, uh, if, this, if we were seeing you when you were like nine or 10, it's like, <laughs> one, two times, boom, and maybe like when you're 12 or 14 after you grew, and that and that's it, you're good to go. But when it's been there for a little bit, okay, wow. It's moving as a whole instead of, la and I, it's just this nice, like I'm like stirring it. It feels very different now, much Just a whole freer. different quality of movement there. Okay, now it got really free. So let's see guys down how we turn I feel how it turns out some and it's wider apart so crisscross sitting was one thing we had talked about before that that wasn't something that you would easily do and you said you've been able to do a little bit more yes for sure I, I tried it <laughs> <laughs> I was like wow this is very different, much easier than before. Yeah, but look how much this opens out now. Yeah. Yeah, the, that was not part of your repertoire before. There. Okay, tell you what, roll over toward me. I know you're going to be seeing the opposite side, so this might be good because you can see what I'm doing from the back side. Um, so we're just going to do the same thing. This side doesn't need as much. It was moving better. And same idea, we're going to start with her hip a little bit more flexed. So the knee is bent, and then we'll do it one more time with it straight. And I switch positions because my control of my right hand and left hand is not the same. So if I want to have more control on one, I switch. Here. That seems pretty flowy. So then let's straighten your leg out. And so from a staying active and well and longevity perspective, what's nice about getting a better alignment here is uh, one of the ways that we keep our spine uh, vertebrae, uh, the bones healthy and strong is um, force from the ground and also the hip too. So weight-bearing exercise is really important. Um, but if you're not lined up here so that the stress is actually stressing the bone in a positive way, um, stress on bones is a good thing, just not too much. Um, like here, you would be isolating and not getting as much um, good stress into the uh, lumbar spine. And I know you want to be all healthy. Yes. <laughs> Do all the pro proactive, preventive <laughs> stuff that you can. There. So now we're getting that same just kind of flowy, wave, long wave-like movement. There. Does that feel kind of similar to what we had on the yeah, other side? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there. And then the, her, her mid-back had a nice movement to it. Okay, so I'm going to check and see if her hip opens up and comes around as much as the other side. It seems to. So go on your back and let's, let's try matching them up. So I'm going to bring feet up. So put feet together, kind of like a lotus position. And do they feel like they go as wide to each side? 
Yeah. Okay. And so I'm going to come up and come a little bit to each side. Yeah, they're not getting stuck at all. It's actually really nice. Um, to come up a little bit more. So in uh, part of our framework that we work from with bridging is um, infant development. So this would be happy baby, baby <laughs> toes. <laughs> like the, those feet going in the mouth, it's a really a good thing for a lot of pastoral reasons. Um, and vision too. There we go. It's the first time babies are looking at something that belongs to them. They, there. Okay, the right shoulder moved much better. And yeah, let's try the other side. Good. It felt pretty similar. Mm -hmm. And then let's just check where we started turning out and in. It's actually much more centered. And they seem to match. And one other way to check, just bring them up straight to know everything folds up nicely and has a nice bounce to it. There you go. Ah, so come on up and sit. And let's just see if the, what we noticed to start with with the sitting, if that's evened out as well. So I was going to the left and going to the right. So that feels a lot easier going both ways, like it's very matched. And from your perspective? Yeah, I feel the same. I felt I was kind of breaking. <laughs> and the turning just feels easier in general. It was it, There was a tiny difference between sides, but that feels really nice. And then forward and back is lovely. And then we'll let you stand up. So go ahead, stand up. And just recheck how she's moving. Yeah, that feels actually much more centered. And when I let go, you just spring back to the middle. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and then forward and back. Yay. Okay, have a seat. We'll just talk through everything. Um, so as a follow-up, what we did was just add a little bit more. So kind of going back to the same place after we checked to make sure there was nothing else in play. Um, just trying to get more movement, but from a broader and deeper perspective so that that movement in the hip is very open and very integrated between core and leg. So then her leg is able to open up more and she has more range of motion in both, which will take some stress off your lower back. Not that that was anything that was bothering you. Um, so you should be able to go out hiking and dancing and all kinds of, all kinds of new stuff or things that you enjoy. Um, so for those of you at home, um, give us a thumbs up. This was a great follow-up example. And um, if you like this and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Um, if you are interested in coming in to be a guest uh, or to not to be a guest and just come to the office, the information is in the show notes. And we do teach the bridging technique. Um, the 2024 schedule will be on our website pretty soon, um, and we'd love to have you. So thanks for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me again. Yeah.